Hi class, I hope you're all safe. I hope you're all well and I hope you're all having a good time in quarantine, you know, at your homes. I hope that your schoolwork is going well and that you can stay positive, as positive as possible. The good thing is that we always have music, we always have violin, and we always have each other to help us through. Good, so in violin, remember what we did last week? We did a lot of the G major scale, we did some more of the autumn leaves and reviewed some more of the pieces. This week, today, we are going to warm up with open strings. When we warm up with open strings, we have to make sure that the elbow raises when we go to the lower string and lowers when we go to the higher string. So we have to get our bow hold all set first, just like this. Really good bow hold all set up, nice. Can your bunny chomp on a carrot? Chomp, 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 chomp. Can your bunny wiggle the ears in the nose? Ears first, then the nose. Ears again, then the nose. Chomp and hop. Hop, 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 hop. Good. Great. So now that we have that, let's put it on the bow. Remember, the thumb goes on the silver clip. Silver clip right there, the silver part. The first finger wraps around, second and third, around the frog, so that the third finger is about on the eye. They call that the eye of the frog, right? And the fourth finger, the pinky, is right up top, and it's pretty square, square like this. Some people have pinkies like this. Make sure your pinky is nice and square, and all your fingers are nice and square around the frog. Really good. Now let's get our violin all set up. All set up nice, make sure that the fingerboard is parallel to the ground. What is the highest string on the violin? Right, that's E string. What about the next? A, D, G. So we are going to do the open strings to some rhythms, but we're gonna focus on the elbow. So when the elbow goes up, we go lower. And when the elbow goes down, our notes get higher. Let's play Tucka Tucka Stop Stop or Pepperoni Pizza on the open E string. Good, so we want the bow to be in the middle, middle of the bow. We also want to be in the middle of this thing called the sounding point. The sounding point is anywhere between the bridge and the fingerboard, anywhere that we can make a sound with the bow. We want it to be about halfway at all times, right in the middle. So let's do pepperoni pizza. Halfway on the sounding point, halfway down the bow. And to get to A, we raise the arm. To get to D, raise the arm again. To get to G, raise the arm one more time. Now lower arm. Lower arm again. Lower arm one more time. Good, let's try this together. So we're going to do this rhythm instead. Down, pony, up, pony, down, pony, up, pony. Good, so down means bow goes towards the ground. Up means bow goes up in the air. So now down, pony, up on E. Raise, arm, down, pony, up on A. Raise, arm, down, pony, up on D. Raise, arm, down, pony, up on G. Lower, arm, down, pony, up on G. Lower, arm. Down, pony, up on A. Good, lower arm, down, pony, up on E. Good, great, so hopefully our violins are all in tune so we don't have to worry about any tuning issues that may arise with that. Another good thing we can do is put the bow right in the middle, right in the middle of the bow, right in the middle of the sounding point, and we could do this exercise I like to call Rockabye Baby. Just focus on the elbow, make sure it's level. Make sure the shoulders are always flat and loose. We don't want these 
creeping up shoulders here, right? Those don't belong in violin playing. So we have our nice elbow, and when we go to the lower strings, raise, lower, raise, lower. We could think of the song, rock a bye baby in the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. Like that, right? So we don't want to make noise. We don't want to go. Because I think at this level, we might get our sounding point off. And all we want to do, we want to just keep the sound as quiet as it can be because we're just focusing on the elbow. So once you do that about five times, we can move on to the next thing. I would love to hear recordings of you guys playing Autumn Leaves. You can send those recordings to me at juliana at intempo.org. And I would love to hear you guys playing the pizzicato version of Autumn Leaves. So I can help you with it. I can give some advice if you need. So please send those to me. Now we can work on Mas Que Nada. We're going to focus more on this one than we did last time. So hopefully you all have the music to Mas Que Nada here. Last time we did the first two lines. I'm going to review those two lines with you. Remember it starts on E. E, F, G, F, E, F, G, F. Remember, one, two, three, two, one, two, three. I'm going to play first, and then you're going to play with me. Ready, set, and go. rest. Now let's play that together. One, two, ready, go. Great, great job. The next part is a lot of open strings. So we have open A, 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 A. We have open A one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. Can you say ten open A's in a row? Ten open A's in a row. And then we rock to the D string and we do two E's and three A's. So ten A's. Two E's and three A's, just like you have in your sheet music. Remember, we did this nice staccato stroke. So we really hear the full value of the quarter rest. So I'm going to start, and you are going to play with me. We're going to do the ten A's first. One, two, ready, go. Rest, rest, four, five, six, seven, Rock. One, two, one, two, three. Rest, rest, rest. Good. Let's do this together. Let's do the whole line, all of line B. One, two, ready, go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, E. Rest, rest, rest. Great, great job. Let's do line C. Line C is A, A, D, D, G, 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 G. E, 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 A, A, A. What is so special about all of the notes in line C? 
right? They're all open strings. So that's interesting. They're all open strings. So A for two notes, D, G for four, high E for four notes, and then A for three more notes. So let's do the next line, line C. We're going to make sure that when we move to the, to the lower strings, we raise our elbow. Let's do line C together. One, two, ready, go. Rest, 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 rest. Rest, 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 good. So the hard thing is going from the low G to the high E without making much of a sound, right? That's where that silent rockabye baby comes in, right? Good, so we can practice that and then make almost no sound so that we can do a really good job getting right to that E. Wonderful, and then D, line D is exactly the same as line B. So I will play line D for you, which is the same as line B. Let's do that together, actually. Save some time, let's do that together. One, two, ready, go. Rest, 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 rest. Good, wonderful. So the only difference between line D and B at the very end, there's a double bar with a repeat sign, right? So the repeat sign means that you go all the way back to the beginning, the chorus. So the, the beginning of Mas Que Nada, that section that we just did, that's called the repeat, and that goes back to the beginning. So now you've learned um, five lines of Mas Que Nada, which is most of the piece. And I'll give you a hint, the coda, the next section, is ex almost exactly the same as um, the chorus, and we will do that next time. So remember, keep working on raising and lowering the arm for this week, and look at the next three lines of Mas Que Nada. It's not too hard, it's just we have to make sure that we get the rest exactly right. Right? Really, really good. So now, I'm going to share with you three recordings on YouTube that have really helped my violin playing or um, viola and violin playing. The first recording is of Itzhak Perlman playing um, three Paganini Caprices. So Itzhak Perlman is a very famous violinist. He's an old man uh, now, but he, he's always been a star since his childhood, and he's playing this piece by um, Niccolo Paganini, who's this great Italian um, composer and violinist. Paganini was so good at the violin, and he wrote so many fancy, flashy things on the violin that people actually thought that he was possessed by the devil. Can you believe that? Yeah, people thought that he was possessed by the devil because he was just so good at the violin and so good at music. So, um, this piece is Paganini 24 Caprices. Yeah, the Paganini 24 Caprices were really, really hard, and it will be so wonderful if you get to watch this. The next recording is of a piece called Scheherazade by Rimsky-Korsakov. This is just the fifth movement of that. This is a big symphonic work. It's about an hour long. It's really, really good. I would love to listen to the, for you to listen to the whole thing, but um, of course, you know, not many people can, can get around to that. Sometimes it's good, though, just to listen to these as you go about your day, like as you're, you know, if you're in the shower or if you're just eating breakfast or something, it would be good to just have some recordings, some nice music. Music really helps a lot of people through tough times, so that, that's really good. Rimsky-Korsakov, the composer of Scheherazade, was one of the big five Russian composers. Um, he's a big old Russian guy. And the story of Scheherazade is of a woman who tells 1,001 stories to the Arabian king in order to stay alive. It's a pretty juicy story, but the music is really, really great. The third recording is from a guy named Piazzolla. He's a guy, an Argentinian man from, um, 
Yeah, from Argentina. And he wrote this piece about the Four Seasons. And this is a, a classic, a wonderful recording. It was written, composed in 1965 to 1970. So this is all really good music by um, a South American composer. And it's, it's awesome. I'd love for you guys to you know, send me an email. Let me know what you think about these pieces and if they inspire you, because they certainly inspired me. Okay, now a little quiz at the end. First question. Do violinists generally play at a different elbow level for each string? We talked a lot about that, so hope everyone gets that right. Number two, what is the third note of Mas que Nada, of the beginning of Mas que Nada? Just the third note. Number three, what is the name of the famous Italian violinist everyone thought was possessed by the devil because he was so talented? Number four, what orchestra is featured in the Scheherazade recording? That would, takes a little bit of research to do, but that's really good. And number five, Piazzolla is a composer from what country? Thank you guys. I hope you all stay safe and well. Look forward to recording another video for you next week, and I'll be on touch on Class Dojo throughout the week with some um, announcements. Great. Thank you. Bye.